And hello, everybody. It is a minute after two o'clock. Sorry, I had to run and get a drink. Um, but time for Unhindered by Coding. This is Nick McPhee. Well, hello, is it too? Wonderful to see you, as always. Um, so the chaos of the semester continues. Um, and in trying to think about what would be both a combination of useful and fun, uh, I've decided we're going to start today by seeing if GitHub Copilot can do the lab. Well, hello, Vincent. Lovely to see you. Um, to do the lab that students are currently working on for them. Um, and I want to have a conversation with students about Copilot and similar tools, ChatGPT, whatever, whatever, and how those might be best used in a setting like this. Um, uh, and I, th I think this lab can be done in a handful of prompts, maybe as few as less than 10, maybe. And uh, so I'm going to try it. I mean, I've kind of poked at bits of it, but I've never like sat down and actually tried to just do the whole lab. Um, so I'm actually going to try to do that. That's going to be the start of today. Um, I don't know how long that'll take. I'm hoping that that's like a half an hour-ish, maybe? Or maybe I'm not hoping. I don't know what, what I'm hoping for here. Um, but I think it might not take very long. And then if there is time, um, I feel like just doing something fun um, for a hot second, because I've been just doing a lot recently. Um, and so I thought, well, you know, let's start writing... Um, the first advent of code problem, if there's time. It should be fast-ish, and it'll be something to do. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, she should totally get me into as many digressions as humanly possible, because um, that will absolutely help um, in every possible way. Because um, I'm actually, I am hoping to either just share this video or to extract out a part of it and share that with the students and ask them to watch it. Uh, and then we can have a conversation about this in class. Um, and that this will be kind of the demo that um, is the beginning of that conversation. So we've talked kind of tangentially about uh, Copilot in class a few times, but this would give us something quite concrete to look at. So that's the battle plan. Um, so what is the lab in question? Too many tabs. So this is the, the, the lab that we're working on. And it's essentially their job is to, actually I'm gonna to go to the code. I think the code would make more sense. Um, there is a, uh, so there we have a server. There's a simple client that's just some hand-coded JavaScript, um, not of particular importance um, here. Uh, what their job is is to focus on the server. And the server uses a library called Javelin. We don't really care a lot about the details of Javelin, but it's you know, one of these kind of standard build a, a web backend um, in language of choice. So it's kind of like um, Express or um, uh, Flask, I think is the Python one, yada, yada. Um, so it's one of those kinds of things. And um, we've given them a support for a user and tests for the user controller. And their job is to uh, do the same thing for a to-dos. I should make that a little bigger. Zoom in. Yeah, that's probably okay. Um, for a to-dos class. Um, and there is a data slash to-dos. It's got a bunch of JSON in it. Uh, where's the data directory? Where is the data directory? Um, resources, uh, 
to do's. So it's got a bunch of um, machine generated to do information. So a to do has an ID and an owner and a status, which is a Boolean, everything else is a string and an ipsum lorem body and a category. Um, and uh, that's described in you know, this document here. So they have to make a todo.java, which captures this information. Um, they have this database is like a fake database because we haven't introduced the actual database stuff until that happens two labs down the road. Um, so the fake database just kind of acts in a database-like way. You construct it. It has a get user that lets you get a user out of it. And it has a list users that gives you all the users, but um, allows for filtering. Um, so that's what's going on there. And then the controller is the part that connects to Javelin and takes a, um, a HTTP request. And the details of the request are in this context object. Um, and then it returns by doing things like setting the JSON field of the context to be what you want to return in the body and setting the status, blah, blah, blah. And so it's not hard. The lab is frankly mostly copy and paste, which is why I think Copilot can do it actually fairly easily. So essentially, you know, a, a reasonable approach is to create a to-do package um, and then you copy all of this content into the to-do package, changing names and fields and stuff as appropriate, and then making a copy of the spec file, um, the test file, and changing as appropriate. So a lot of it is, do you, you know, can you understand the, the user stuff well enough to do the copy and paste and not break things? Um, uh, and this is the first time the students have probably done anything like this. Um, you know, everything they've done up until now has probably been um, little exercises and data structures exercises, which might be a little bigger, but don't represent like apps that do something. Um, and so this is probably their first time dealing with that kind of stuff. So there's a lot here that they don't know. Um, uh, and it can be challenging. Um, but I have this feeling that Copilot can do most of it because it is essentially the the user stuff gives us the template and it's pretty good at like copying templates. So we're going to see if I can make that work. Um, so I think what I want is let's bring up chat and let's make this wider. So I think a Something like, oh, I wanted the README or the lab tasks because I want to be able to select that information um, to highlight uh, the fields that we need. Uh, um, now, I learned rather by accident that um, there is a workspace, um, an at thing, um, which you can use to... Essentially, you're telling GitHub Copilot that the question you're asking is going to be about the entire workspace. Otherwise, GitHub Copilot... Um, so to answer your question, Vincent, they are working on the lab right now. It's actually due Monday. So they probably won't see this until after they are done or they are close enough to done that it won't matter much. Um that's not so much by design as it, I just didn't have time to get to. The, well, it didn't occur to me until actually they were first started working on the lab. Um, yes, so we'll all be prompt engineers soon. Um, and uh, we will worship our AI or overlords. Um, it was during lab on Tuesday uh, when, we, when they started the lab, so five days ago, whatever that would be. Um, there's some time where they, they have to answer a bunch of questions. And so they're, they're fairly quiet and they're just reading through code and, and trying to, uh, answer those questions. And there weren't a lot of questions for me yet. Um, and I was like, oh, well, what am I, you know, what can I do? 
And I thought, well, I wonder what Copilot would do with this. And so I tried a prompt and was like, oh, it did a really good job with that. Um, and so that kind of prompted the idea. But then I didn't, and I kept thinking all week, oh, I'll try to do this and make a, a, a video. I'll try to do this and make a video. And here we are Saturday, and I haven't gotten to it. So I'm just going to use the stream as a way to do that. Um, so there is this workspace thing that says you have the GitHub Copilot can basically look. Um, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> I make two, actually. Um, so um, at a minimum. I actually did make two videos specifically for class last night that aren't part of the stream. Um, short videos trying to uh, demo how to deal with some things. Um, but I thought this might be kind of interesting for more than just me. And so we'd put it in the stream. Um, so in general, Copilot just looks at what you have selected or the file that you have open as its context. So it tries to take a fairly narrow view of your material. Um, which I think is probably generally good. Like it's not um, rooting around in all of your files uh, willy-nilly. At least that's what they claim. Um, if you put the at workspace, you're basically saying you can look at anything and everything. Um, so you're giving GitHub Copilot license to look at the whole world. And since essentially I want it to build several new files based on a variety of files and other information, um, I was like, I'll just use the workspace thing. So workspace, um, can you create um, uh, a new UMM CSI, no, I think it's UMM 3601. That's the package name that we use. Let me actually confirm that. Um, let me get one of the things open. Yeah, UMM 3601. Okay. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Uh, dot to do package containing to do dot Java to do database dot Java and to do controller. Java based on the uh, classes in UMM 3601 user in, let's say, in the package. Um, it would also be good to create a to do controller spec. Uh, test class class similar to the uh, user controller spec class. Oh, I forgot to tell it the field. Um, 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 let's say to do that Java using the highlighted fields. Um, also create uh, to do dot Java and to do controller dot Java based on the classes in the user package. It would be good to create a to do colors. Okay. So I'm kind of hoping, let's see. Do I think that's going to do everything I want? Um, let's say contain two dot Java similar to the user dot Java file, but using the highlighted fields. Also create a to do database dot Java and a to do controller dot Java based on blah, blah, blah. It would be good to create a to-do controller spec class similar to the user controller spec class. Well, let's see what happens. What is the worst that happens? Well, oh, ah, did I lose it? Oh, man. How did that happen? I was 
down arrowing and I seem to have down arrowed into oblivion. Well, that's not good user interface. I shouldn't be able to lose my fairly lengthy prompt by doing that. Arr. Okay. Um, can you create a um, to do class in a new UMM's 3601 dot to do package based on I me. Mean, it's possible. I probably would be better off not trying to do this all in one prompt, but I'm sort of curious. Yes, that counts as one of my prompts. Arr. Um, it certainly counts as time in the video. So um, the, I probably would be better off doing smaller prompts, but I'm kind of curious just to see how big a prompt I can throw at it and get it, how much I can get it to do in one shot. Um, uh, so based on the user class in umm 3601user um, uh, we also need to create to do database and to do uh, controller classes um, uh, based on the classes in so what if I just say can do to do database to do controller and to do controller spec classes based on the classes in umm 3601.user uh, in the package can you create a to do um, that's what let him say just please and I realize I'm being like stupidly polite to an AI, but I find it just, I, it's hard for me to just tell it to do things. It feels very awkward. So please create the, a to-do class in a new umm 3601to do package based on the user class in umm 3601user We also need to com create, oh, I need to say... Um, using uh, the f highlighted fields and based on the user class in user. We also need to create to do database, to do controller, and to do controller spec classes based on the classes in the user package. Okay, we're going to see what happens. And I'm not going to actually blow this one away by accident. Um, so now it gets information about the workspace, figures out which parts of the workspace are relevant, gets the relevant information. Tell it tells me what references, what pieces of the workspace it's using. That's actually an interesting feature, and then it starts cranking out code, zippity doo dah, and. Okay, so it actually didn't give me very much. Um, oh, that's interesting. Because I think that when I did this before, asking about a single class, like to do database, it just gave me the whole class. But here, it's sort of encouraging me to do a little more work, uh, which is interesting. But I bet that we can go in and finish these things off. So I'm gonna, I'll take this prompt. We're gonna put all this code in and then uh, we'll go from there, see where we end up. So, okay, so I want to, uh, I need to create a, uh, so let's see, it says, sure you can read in UMM to do package, who you might, how you might structure that. And this is exactly what I would expect. Um, we're using public fields, like normally I would be all shouty about not using public fields, but we're using public fields because Mongo just wants data classes with public fields so it can slot stuff in. Um, Copilot was smart enough to recognize that this is a Boolean 
and kind of infer that the others were strings, even though we never actually said that. So, yay, that's a thing. So I'll copy that. We'll create a new folder, which is to do. And we'll create a file, which is to do.java. And then it actually, somebody filled some stuff in, but I'm going to just get rid of all that and paste in what Copilot gave me. And voila! And one of the nice things actually about Copilot is it does a pretty good job of. Um, represents a single user. That's not very helpful. Uh, class for a single to-do. Um, boom. And there actually are going to be some issues here. Um, we're using check style to check things. It's sort of kind of like lint, Clippy. In It's a linting tool. Um, and CheckStyle is going to be not happy about starting a field name with an underscore because that's not the Java style. And it's going to be unhappy about the prompts. So we're going to have to suppress those warnings. But I'm going to wait until we sort of get there to worry about that. Um, so that gives us our to-do. And then we'll do our to-do database. New file to do database.java. And again, somebody filled some stuff in, but I'm going to do that. Um, why did it include that? Did it actually include that? Huh. That's probably in the user database implementation. So I'm going to actually, I'll take that out for now and, and we'll let it put it back in um, when it needs it. And then we need the to-do controller. And da, 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 da. we'll go with the controller is here. And so just make all that go away. Um, ooh, interesting. It replaced it with Spark. And that's wrong. It didn't get that right. So Spark is the predecessor to Javelin. Um, I mean, it's been called Javelin now for five years or something. It's been Javelin for a while. So that's a weird, like, memory. And, and that would be confusing for students because they would have no idea that it used to be called Spark. Um, so that's awkward. Um... And boom, uh, I'll, so I'll just take that out. And then we've got the spec file that's going to be down here in tests. Uh, new file to do controller spec.java. And go to my chat. Um, and we'll copy that and we'll plop that in. And. Uh, ooh. Um, oh, did I put it in the wrong place? I bet I did. I did. Look at that. Bad me. So new folder, to do, and move the to do controller spec into there. That'll make that go away. And then there's a bunch of imports missing. And I'll just quick fix those. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, oh, I think that's old JavaScript. Or old old Java. Is that true? I think that's old Java. So I think if we look at user controller, um, it's now before each... Um, yeah, so I think these are... I'm, I'm just going to remove these and these, and we'll have Copilot try to fill that stuff in. Um, and it'll hopefully sort out the, um, the imports appropriately. Okay, so we have it to do, and I think all this will build. Am I in the right place? Yes, yeah. 
uh, Gradle, oops, I need to go to the server, Gradle W build, um, yeah. yeah, let's do build. Um, and I think this will fail because of the um, check style. Yes, the check style is not happy um, because ID doesn't match the right pattern and all those things are private. So, can we get, um, uh, Copilot to do this for us? Um, suppress the check style warning, um, about this having, this name having the wrong form. Hmm, I'm not sure that's actually the right thing to put there. Let's find out. I mean, it is, oh, and actually I really wanted that. It did put it in the wrong place. I want that there because I want it to just apply to this one um, field. Um, did that make that one disappear? Or is it at an old reference? Oh, it did make it disappear. Interesting. Huh. Because I would have, if we comment that out and rerun it, check style tells you what the um, warning name is. So it's the member name warning or rule that's triggering. And so I would have, ex and they're kind of saying that here, but they're namespacing it to say that it's part of check style. That's interesting. Wonder if you can can't put the camel case version in. Does it still work? It does. Well, that's interesting. Okay. And the others are this visibility modifier rule. Um, so, uh, let me see if I can get um, can you suppress the check style warning um, about these being uh, the fields in this class all being public I wonder if it's going to understand what I meant by that. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Because it's visibility modifier, right? Oops. Um, yeah, it was visibility modifier. So I bet that works. And it does. Okay, so we have a working build that does a thing. Um, well, it doesn't do anything interesting yet because so far the only... Um, code uh, that we've actually implemented is this little class. So let's go over here. Now, can I just say, can you complete this implementation based on uh, the uh, implementation in user database? Java. Uh, no, that's not good. I don't think it's really using user data, user database dot Java there. Cause I know we didn't have this part. I'm going to discard that. Um, let's go back to the chat workspace so my it's going to be 10 prompts might be completely up a tree and my idea that's going to be half an hour is also looking like it's up a very big tree um What if I just do that? Do, 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 do.
And there is definitely some engineering. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I am not convinced that somebody with no idea what was going on could, at least so far, um, use this terribly effectively. Um, well, like you have user database. That's weird. I would have thought that the workspace would have given it that information, but... Um, ba -ba -da -ba -do. Uh, here's user database dot Java. Um, but it does sometimes want, it'll add, which is kind of nice. Like it's saying, okay, I need to see something to be able to do this. Um, and so then you kind of know what it's looking at, um, which I think is not a bad thing. Um, and then here we go. It's going to give us a bunch of stuff. And that is looking a lot more promising. Oops. I didn't want to make that go away. Yeah. So it had the array at the top. So that looks pretty good. One vulnerability. What's the unvalid input in path value creation risk unintended file directory access? Hmm. I'm not sure what that's telling us. I wonder if it's this to do file, the fact that we're reading that to do file. It's telling us that's potentially risky. Hmm. I don't know. Not sure what that is about. Maybe we'll have to look at that. But let's uh, plop all this in for to do database. Okay. Uh, that's never used. Fine. Um. And, but the rest of this compiles. Don't know if it works, but it compiles. And it seems to be, I mean, it does seem to be right that, um, so we get this array of all to-dos. We get, uh, when we, in the constructor, we get a file that tells us where we're gonna read those from. And we read them in and use the object mapper Jackson's object mapper to turn the JSON into instances of our to-do class. Size gives us the length. Get to-dos gives us all the to-dos. Although, should it say find first? That seems off to me. Um, user database. All users. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, oh, get user. That was probably get user. Get to do, yes. So it gives you this the first to do that has that ID. There shouldn't be more than one, but uh, filter gives you a stream of possibly many. Um, and so this grabs the first one um, or returns null if there is nothing. Uh, and that does match this. And then list all the to do's we actually get the information out of the query parameters. Um, well, that's probably where the map was coming from because it had an import of a map earlier and I bet it was to support this. So the query parameters map a string to a list of strings. So a key to a list of values. Um, and, uh, oh, oh, that's user. So actually it's worth, no so here it's got uh, it does filtering by age and company. Um, and here it kind of built in filtering by status and category, which are probably the first two. No, through the second and the fourth. How weird. Um, but it did put those two in um, so that if we have a status, it will match against that status. And if we have a category, it'll match against that category. Um, so, cool. I think there's going to be a problem with the status that we're going to have to deal with later when we get to the testing. But for now, I'm going to let it go. Um, and, uh, and then it calls these filter 
functions, which are pretty straightforward uses of filter on streams. So that should be a thing. Now, are there any um, check style whininesses that we should be aware of? Oh, hey, there are. Ah, yes. Ah. So this is not check style, um, but this is, we have a check that you have to, your test coverage has to be at least 80%. And when we added the database with no testing, um, our test coverage has dropped uh, below the acceptable threshold. Um, and I think all the testing currently goes through the controller. Um, so if we copy the tests um, based on the user uh, example, uh, we kind of have to have the, um, um, the to-do controller in place. So let's build that and then we'll worry about this. Okay, so um let's we'll preemptively expect it's going to want to know about the user controller so i'm going to do that um uh make a to do or let's say implement a to do controller class based on the user controller class um, and I'll throw in workspace at the front of that I don't know if I need that or not or if it's helping um, certainly makes it slower it looks at more stuff um, um, so yeah is it so I think at the moment it would be pretty hard for somebody who really had no idea what they were doing to build anything of substance this way certainly not anything that would be reliable um uh you might be able to get it to compile but i don't know i don't think it'd be good um and um uh that doesn't seem like that's gonna be enough i feel like that's not gonna be sufficient where's the user controller Yeah, because we don't have the add routes method. Why did it not give us the add routes method? Because we need that. Um, hmm. That's interesting. I think these two are probably right, but we're going to be missing add routes. So we'll have to add that. Um, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Okay. Um, and... Let's actually bring you over here so we can compare. Um, so, to do controller. Um, the constructor just sets the database. Uh, gets it. Uh, oh, it's missing the build user build to do controller. I think I got that the other day when I did this, though. I wonder if it's because I selected all the text. Hmm. Let me try that. Um, create a or, uh, create a to do controller class based on the selected implementation I can't spell implementation of user controller boom da, 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 da. is that going to be better um, it did give us the add routes and it did give us the build controller. So I think that's a slight improvement. It lost all the comments. That's mildly annoying, but um, we can ask it to put comments back. It does a pretty good job with comments actually. Um, so our build to do controller, um, 
we get the database and we construct that and we return it and that's reasonable um, I'm not quite sure I think this null here was me playing with something actually I mean that I probably shouldn't be there so this is probably an improvement and then get to do we get the thing, the pram path, we look up the ID, we get the to-do out of the database. If the to-do is null, it's not null, then we stick it in the JSON and say okay. Otherwise we throw a not found response, no to-do with ID, blah, that's good. Get to-dos, passes along the query map, sticks in the users, and then add routes. We have a to do's ID and a to do's, and they call the right function. So that's actually, I think, correct. Um, and that will fail to build because the uh, test coverage situation is even worse. And I think we can't run until we resolve those because I think since those happen in. Uh, no, I lie. We can run it. So we can actually run the um, AI generated version of the world um, and lo and behold so there's users and we can do stuff okay, let's go to to do's we can oh hey oh oh I know what the problem is um, we haven't actually told main to add the to do controller to the um, list of controllers. And until that's there, the server doesn't know to do anything about that. Um, so we'll have to do that. Um, yeah, so I think you're right, Vincent. Like, I don't think you can yet say, here's the, the English language or German or French or Brazilian or Portuguese or um, Korean, whatever, um, description, make me a piece of software. It's not there yet. Now, it's able to do things that we could not do like this, um, th not remotely do, just a few years ago. So it's a little hard to say what two years out looks like, but at least not yet. We're not there. Um, so uh, I wonder if... Um, I can ask it without giving it a whole lot of context. If I say workspace, um, can you add the to do controller to the list of controllers passed to the Javelin server? So here, like if I didn't know where to put it, I somehow knew it needed to go somewhere, but I didn't know where. Can Copilot figure that out? That I think is an interesting question. And it picked reasonable references uh, in server. I don't want it to be in server. No, actually, that is not the right answer. Um, because I want my server class to not, do I have server open? I don't. I want my server class to not know about specific servers or specific controllers. Like it just gets handed an array of things that implement this controller interface and it doesn't know anything about the specific servers. So this is actually not a good answer. Um, I don't want to actually, um, I'd rather not expose, uh, ha let's see, have server depend on specific controller implementations. Um, uh, can we add it to the controllers array?
passed into the server constructor. Now at this point, I pretty much know what I want to do, and I'm telling it to do it for me, and it's not doing it very well. Yeah, that is not the right answer. I don't want that at all. I really want it to be in main. Um, uh, no, I don't want any reference in server.java to to do controller. Let's say any explicit reference. Um, can we add it in main? At which point I kind of know the answer, right? So, um, uh, yeah, okay, that's reasonable. Well, except for it's not very good uh, because it put it in main. So actually it's really not doing a very good job of this. Um, so let's just go to main and just, so here I think if I just say, if I pause, will it figure something out? Also add the to do controller um, to the list of controllers. Oh, come on. No, it does not want to do that. Um, build a to do to, to do controller. Boom. Yeah, there we go. That's reasonable. I think. Uh, so maybe that's why it didn't auto do it because the to do, the to do data file didn't exist. Um, but it can figure that out easily enough. Okay, so now I think we can run, and I think we ought to be able to download to dos. Fingers crossed. Da 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 da. -da. Um, get to do's. Hey, look at all the to do's. And what what filtering did it provide? It provided filtering for. Oh no, that's what I want. Um, oh, that was in the database. <laughs> database supports filtering by status and by category. Now category will probably work, but I think status will not. So if I say video games, yep, I only get video games. That's awesome. And if I say groceries, I only get groceries. Lovely. Now if I go back to any and I say status is complete, I think we'll get a bad or not. We get everything that's false, which is kind of actually what I would expect for incomplete. And what happens if I change it to incomplete? Everything's still false. Yes, yeah, so that's broken. And the reason that's broken is on the client side, we're actually using the strings complete and incomplete. And in the database, we're actually using a Boolean, true or false. And somewhere there's got to be a mapping between those two things. And that isn't implemented anywhere at the moment. And uh, um, that means that um, I think it's interpreting anything that isn't true is being interpreted as false. Um, and so it's not good. We are not getting the things that we want. Uh, so we're going to have to fix that. Let's actually wait until we do the test because I think there are tests that will fail um, as a consequence. So let's over here open user controller spec and then we'll go into chatland and i'll just copy all of this and i'll say implement a 
uh, to do controller spec class based on the selected implement implementation of user controller spec. Boom. Do 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 do. Diddly do diddly do. Lots of stuff. Um. Okay. Well, it looks like it's pattern matching reasonably well. Um, now I don't think it did all the tests. Well, let's get, yeah, so it's missing. It didn't, it didn't try to copy all of these, which sort of makes sense. Like there's a test saying, can we get all the users with age 25, but to do's don't have an age. So it didn't sort of attempt to do those. And that's probably not unreasonable. So let's copy that and put that in to do controller spec as a starting point. Um, and there's a bunch of unused imports. I'm actually gonna, I'll just clean those out. Um, organize imports. Many of them will probably have to go back in, but it's probably easier to have them uh, not there. Um, so let's run test. Ba, ba, ba. Do the tests actually pass? They do not. Um, oh, actually they might. Um, oh, it looks like the tests actually pass. It's just the coverage um, isn't quite there yet. So we're at 0 0.7 or 70% and the minimum is set to 80%. So the tests that exist pass. Um, we're just not testing enough yet, which isn't shocking. Um, so that's kind of cool. So let's actually read through that. Um, oh, and actually let, let's keep this available. So we have the comparison. Um, uh, so we suppress magic number. Um, we have a We don't. Oh yeah, here we go. We have a to-do controller and a to-do database. It mocked a context and an argument captor for us. Um, the before each uh, calls open mocks. So this is some weird stuff about capturing arguments and mocking and we don't really care, but it's doing the right thing. Um, it constructs the database. Um, using the right file, and it constructs a controller. Great. And then um, the first test says we can actually build the controller, so we try to build it. Um, and we create a mock server. Um, so we mock the Joblin class, and we call add routes with the mock server, and we verify that um, there were at least two calls to get. Um, so this is a pretty weak test. It just confirms that the get, that we added two routes um, that were both gets without any checking on what the uh, details of those routes were, but at least confirms that things got built. Um, and then uh, build controller fails with the illegal database file. Um, if we pass an illegal database file name, this fails with an IO exception. That's correct. Um, can get all users. Um, we get the controller. We get set up um, the, oh, we verify that the JSON method is called on CT, on the context and we capture whatever is passed to it, and we assert that whatever is passed to it has the same size as the database. So we should be passing all the to-dos in, in the JSON object um, as an array. And so we're confirming that what got passed in had the same size. Again, a weakish test. 
It doesn't actually check that they're the same, that they're the right things. We just test that there's enough of them, but whatever, it'll work. So now there's a whole bunch of tests and we need to um, generate some tests that are more specific to um, the uh, to do context. So if we look at our to do file, let's see, what if we move you over closer to the to do file? That might be useful. Uh, rah, rah, rah. There we go. So we have owner, we have status, and we have body. And we do have implementations for. Oh, we, yeah, so we have status and category implemented. Status and category implemented. So, and we would expect the status one to fail. Um, let's do the category one first, because that should pass. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, let's, let's write a comment. Um, a test that verify or verifies that um, if we provide, um, let's say if we filter uh, for only to do's with category. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. It's trying to help out. Um, let me bring that down here. Um, then all the returned to-dos have that category. Yeah, that looks great. Um, now, can it fill it in? Boom. Test to-dos by category. We get a controller. We verify that the JSON, we capture what was passed to the JSON. Um, we take the value that the captor got, which should be an array of to-dos. We loop over those to-dos and we assert that we should get homework. Now that's not quite right because we have to set the query parameters first. Um, so it didn't understand the query parameters part. So basically these three lines are missing. Hmm. Uh, what if we select this and we go over here and we say implement a um, can get to do's by category test in to do well it's we don't need to say uh, yeah let's do that to controller spec dot java um bay that let's see based on can so the selected can get users with company test. Uh, the test should confirm that if we provide homework, uh, let's see, let's say, yeah, uh, homework, as the category in the query parameters. So at this point, you know, I'm, a, I'm spending more time asking it to do the work for me than it would take for me to just do the work. Eh. Um, it, the test should confirm that if we provide homework as the category in the query parameters, then all the returned to do's would have homework as their category. Boom. 
Doop 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 doop. Let's see if we get something useful here. Um. Ah, that looks promising, actually. Doop doop. Um. Can get to these. So this is the new one. This is the one it did before. This does have the query param stuff. So we're getting the map. We're putting in category and homework is the value. Here, let's make you go away. And then when we ask for the query param map from the context, we should return query param. So we're mocking the behavior of query param map. Then we run the controller. So that part is line 79. And from 79, from here down, it's the same as up here with this comment added, which is nice. Um, so we capture the argument. Um, we Oh, it, it didn't actually do this part. Um, it Which I kind of liked that, actually. So I think I might steal that from up here. Um, cause I think that was probably a good thing. And then this is to do's here. Um, cause it kind of makes it clear what the type is and that this is coming from here. And then we assert that they all have category homework. Okay. And that got shifted into the wrong place. So I'm actually going to make this go away. Boom, boom, boom. And let's run the tests again. And I don't know if we'll be over 80% or not. Um, nope, we're still not quite there. Um, so, but we're headed in the right direction. So that takes care of can get to do's. Now let's do something for status. And that's gonna be a little more complicated because there's not really an obvious um, Hmm. Let's go with the um, uh, what's the order of owner is the first thing. Yeah, let's go with that. Oh, it, it went away. I wanted I like that. Let's do that. Boom. I know I wanted to, here we go. Um, so owner, and that is actually an owner in the database. So it kind of figures out from some that voodoo that Blanche is a person who owns to-dos. Uh, and then the rest, we just check that the owner is Blanche. So that actually probably is quite reasonable. Cool. Um, oh, oh no, something failed. To do controller spec line 90. What failed on line 90? Right here. That's interesting. So, oh, oh, the controller doesn't implement filtering by owner yet. Uh huh. Oh, the database, I mean. The database doesn't have a filter by owner. So we need filter, oh, capital O, filter owner if defined. Bingo. So we get the value of owner, and then that doesn't exist. So we need to add it. Um, uh, huh. Didn't even have to tell it anything. It's like, yes, I can fix that. Now, that test will probably pass. Uh, and we might, nope, we're still at, we're probably like going from 0.73 to 0.75 to 0.77. Um, we could look at the, um, actually, maybe we should do that. Let's actually open, uh, let's see, open, yeah, that thing. Um, so our to-do, let's make this a little bigger. Um, so our to-do database, we, uh, 
we don't have anything that covers the statuses yet. Um, and we don't have anything that tests getting a single to do by ID. And this is more status stuff. So we do definitely, the main thing here would be getting the statuses done. Um, and then um, the controller, oh, there's no, there's nothing for getting a single to do. And then we need to deal with that. Okay, so we got those two things to, to deal with. Um, and is there actually a, I feel like when we looked at the controller spec, there was not a test for getting a single to do, which is weird. I would have thought there would have been a test for getting user by ID. Oh, here we go. It's right there. Yeah. So there is this one. Um, why don't we do that actually? Um, and I think I would put it here, uh, maybe even here. Um, I wonder if I can, hmm, let's just try confirm that we get a single to do. I should scoot you over there. Um, when we get by ID with a valid ID, there's I exception. When does that happen? If there's problems reading from the database, I don't know why it keeps wanting to end that comment there. Um, boom, you going to do it for me? Apparently not. I don't know why it uh, is so uninclined. Oh, there we go. Can get to do by ID. Boom. Um, yeah. This is not. Um, okay. I don't think he did a great job there. Um, let's actually try this again. Um, write a can get to do with specified ID. Oh, actually, I'm going to say workspace because, I, whoa, what happened there? Oh, that's weird. I must have pasted something by accident. Workspace. Um, implement a can get to do with specified ID test based on the selected can get user with specified ID test. Um, I'm curious to see if it actually finds a legit um, ID for a uh, to do. That's part of why I added the workspace to see if it would possibly do that. Oh, hey, look, I should look at my um, chat more often. Hi, Justice. Wonderful to see you again. Um... <laughs> So we are trying to use uh, GitHub Copilot, or I am trying to use GitHub Copilot to solve the lab my students are currently working on. Um, I had thought this might take half an hour. It's now taken an hour and 10 minutes, and we still have um, plenty of time. I've seen pictures of you, so you could be an AI, but you've got some reasonable video generation um, when I get to see your stream. So uh, I do not personally think you're an AI, but each to their own. Uh, so let, that does look better. Let's copy that. Um, plop that in here. Um, now, the question is, is that a known database entry? No idea. Um, 
to do oh this probably just needs to be imported boom 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 import ah import yes i think this is what i want yeah okay so now i wonder if that test passes that's a fascinating question Do, 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 do. So, good question. How long do I expect this lab to take the average student? Well, hmm. They're working in pairs, which could make them go faster, but could make them... Oh, hey, look, it passed. And that got the test coverage up over... Um, yeah, so we got our test coverage up high enough. Really? Actually, to do database is still under 80%. Um, oh, oh, I think it does it for the whole project. Has to be a net over 80. And now we've managed to get this over 80. We're still at 66 on to do. And so there's definitely work to be done there. But we're moving in the right direction. So back to the question. Um, the... Um, so they're in pairs. Um, it's the first time most of them have worked together because I randomly generate the pairs. I don't let them choose. Um, so I'm sort of forcing them to, to work with as many different people as possible over the course of the labs. Um, they have, and they have more to do than just the code. Like they have some questions to answer beforehand. And that takes up, like probably an hour and a half or two hours. It takes up a lot of the first lab for most students. Um, I think a group that is thoughtful and keeps it together and works well together can get this done. Ignoring the questions part, I think most of them finish it in, uh, let's say four hours. Um, but there's a, a significant variation there. Um, I think there are groups that can do the whole thing in two to three hours, maybe. And there are groups that will spend 10 plus hours on it. Um, so the, the standard deviation on this is pretty high, um, uh, depending on background and experience and um, confidence. Like some of it is like just being nervous about touching things and hoping they don't blow up. Um, uh, and it can depend a lot on how well the two people work together. Um, so all those things matter. Um, and I'm pretty sure the students that aren't AIs because they're awfully realistic looking human beings, but I'm the only one of the group that one, only one of us who's ever seen them. So you'll have to take my word for it. Um, and I think, you know, you're right, is it, Sue? You know, group assignments are kind of like roommates or even, you know, life partners. Um, the right person, wonderful. The wrong person, really not fun. Um, and part of this class is like learning to deal with that reality and trying to do good work as a team. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in the labs about, uh, well, and, and in the iterations about, um, uh, peer evaluations and peer feedback and working well together as a team. Um, so it is an important part of the class and we do put a lot of effort into that, but it's not something that everybody is equally happy about. Um, there are students that really don't like working with other people and find that aspect of the course quite troublesome. I think based on my few weeks with these people. I guess, what have I had? Two weeks with these people. I think this group is really good, and I think they're working well together in teams, and I'm actually really happy and optimistic about how this is going to go, but it is not always good. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, and and that, that sort of question of, like, is is the work being distributed kind of in a fair way? That's a hard problem. And that's one of the reasons we collect feedback on a regular basis. 
Um, uh, and we reserve the right, like while we would typically give everybody in the group the same grade, that's our goal, we do reserve the right to add multipliers um, if we have good evidence that somebody did a lot more than other people or somebody did a lot less than other people. And that happens sometimes. We try not to do that, but it happens. Um, yes, everyone's back in person. Um, so we're in the lab working um, in groups together. Um, I still wear a mask to class because I've managed, I'm one of the like, you know, handful of people that haven't had COVID yet. Um, and I'd like to keep it that way. So I'm masking, but nobody else is. Um, and so far this hasn't been an issue, but, um, uh, yes, right. So you're correct that there's, you know, less at stake here than there is in uh, a lot of real world things. Um, but, uh, and, and, you know, we're because so much of this is new, the size of the groups, the size of the project, having a customer, the 18 million new technologies, we're trying to do this in a way where there is some safety net and the students don't feel like they're going to completely blow up um, if uh, this doesn't work well. Um, so, mm, finger crossed. Oh, hello, C Films. Wonderful to see you. I am doing well. Um, and I'm glad that you're, you've been making progress on your portfolio website. That's good. Um, so, uh, there is no rust here today. So if, if we get to advent of code, which given the time, I think it's kind of not likely, um, uh, we will, um, might be completely in Java for this session. Um, I'd like to get back to rust, please, but this is stuff I need to do for class. So. Um, and yeah, justice, um, you know, get is actually really nice for this. Like students can do some weird stuff and get can save them. In fact, in class yesterday, it was clear that some things that happened that, you know, some people gotten confused and done some things they probably didn't want to do. And we were like, so we went over like how to use get to unwind that. Um, uh, so, um, and yeah, I think the, 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 the finding a group yourself, I think that's actually a real issue is that you can, uh, <laughs> uh, there are people that know, a lot, have a lot of friends in the class and there's kind of a natural group setting. Um, but then there are also people, like if we have a transfer student come in, they've never, never taken any classes with these people. And um, so uh, randomizing the groups while students find it frustrating sometimes because they want to work with their friends, if they have friends in the class, I think randomization kind of levels the playing field. And I just change the groups every um, lab. Uh, and then by the time we get to the iterations, they hopefully have worked with most of the people in the room. And um, so we're trying to like, you know, make that happen. And of course, when you get hired, you don't have a lot, like if you form a startup, you might have a lot of control over who you work with, but you get hired in a company of any size, you get all, you get who you get. Um, and, you know, you might have through the interviews gotten some sense that you like these people and that you want to work with them, but you know, you don't have a lot of control over that. Um, what do I think of Java C films? I think Java is fine. I like Rust better on, and I could talk about why. I mean, the fact that there's not null in Rust actually is a huge win. Um, and I think the type system in Rust is a lot more interesting um, and a lot more helpful. Uh, but uh, I like Rust and actually it's been a good language for us as a teaching language. And there's obviously a lot of real world software written in Rust. So I'm not, I mean, in Java, I, so I'm not against Java, but um, uh, I would prefer to use Rust myself these days, but yeah, that's me. Um, Vincent, are they using version control in previous classes? N historically, no, but that is changing. So this was often the first class, um, their first exposure to Git. Um, and the first lab is actually called Intro to Git because it was an introduction to Git. Um, the... Uh, however, KK, one of my colleagues, is 
has been moving to using Git in Git and GitHub and GitHub Classroom in her data structures class, which is a prerequisite for this. And so actually everybody in this semester's class had used Git in at least a minimal way. They had not done it in Teams. Um, all they had really done is Git commit Git add, Git commit, and Git push. So they hadn't used pull requests. They hadn't used branches, actually. They were just merging straight into main. Um, but they were using Git, um, and they did have some idea of how that worked. Um, they've had to learn a lot more Git um, in the week, two weeks at the beginning of the semester. Um, and so they're kind of scrambling to get up to speed on Git. But they have made progress on that. So... Um, uh, Haskell versus Java versus Rust. Oh man, justice. Um, actually, I mean, I think for me, it's pretty clearly Rust of the three. Um, I think R Rust beats out Java for a variety of reasons. Um, some of which I mentioned, like just simply not having null, um, uh, but also I think the ownership model in Rust is really nice. And has some would deal with some significant problems I've run into um, with Java in the past. Haskell, you know, I there's a lot I like about Haskell in principle, but in practice, I think Haskell's a little too far away from the machine for me. Um, uh, I like being a little closer to the computer than Haskell puts me. Now, there are times when that wouldn't be true, um, but, uh, you know, I kind of like having a little sense that the machine's there, and that's one of the things I like about Rust, is I can kind of ignore that the machine's there when I don't care, but the machine, I can take advantage of, like, being able to touch the machine if I want to, um, and I think that's an interesting combination, so... Um, C films. What do you think of Python as a first language? I think Python's great, actually. One of our intro courses is in Python, and I think that's worked very well. Um, the other intro course is in Racket, which I also like. Um, but I think Python's um, a good way to start. Um, now, uh, Justice is talking about something I know nothing about. What is this thing? Um... Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that is probably not something we're likely to use. Um, uh, oh, yeah, it's not, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't need to know more. This is sufficient to tell me that we are not going down that road. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, ho, ho, ho. Um, uh, but, yeah, uh, I think Python's great. As an intro language, I think Python works well. Um, Code Combat, I think I have heard of it. I don't think I've ever done it. Um, I mean, there's a ton of these kinds of things online. Code Wars, I have used, which I think is similar. Um, but I don't, I've never used Code Combat, so that's not something I, I'm familiar with. Um, okay, let's see. Well, it's 325. Let's um, see if we can get this thing done. So where are we here? We need to test. Um, okay, so we really need to do a status query. Um, and that's going to, I think, blow up its little brain. Um, I don't even know. How do you pronounce Malbolga? has eight instructions. Um, uh, oh, my. That just sounds so terrible. Um uh, Malboga, not Code Combat. Um, so, and I think good good online tools can be great ways to learn languages. Um, I think the end you have to start to build something of some size to get an idea of how it really works in the real world. But you know, as a starting point, just understanding the syntax and the you know the basic concepts, online tools I think can be great. Um, so, okay. So we've got that. So we've got get by owner. What what uh, what 
else do we have? Owner. So status is the next one. So we should do status. Um, does it try to figure something? Aha, there we go. It thinks it wants to do that. Now, the question is, is this even remotely right? Um, okay. So we set the status to be complete. We get the to-dos. And for every to-do, oh yeah, there we go. We're checking that the status is true if we have complete. That actually is not an unreasonable test. Now, does that test pass? That's a great question that I don't know the answer to. Guessing it doesn't? Yes, it fails. So line 132, right here, that fails. Do we get a little more information? No, but we could open uh, build reports. Test, test, index. And will this tell us something useful? Yes. So, right here. Oh, it's just that we have true when we. Oh, yes, because everything's false. No. No, that's not true. So the fill, oh yeah, the filtering's wrong because the filtering treats everything as false. And so we just get only false things back. That's the problem. Um, <laughs> I like the fact that the creator of the language never wrote a program themselves. Um, so new shell is definitely something I should probably look into. Um, I, at the beginning of streaming, so a year and a half ago, I looked at some uh, other shells and I liked fish and I was like, oh, I'll use fish. Um, so I've been using fish and I do like fish a lot, but I haven't actually like, and I think I played with new shell for a hot minute. I might even have it installed. Do I have it installed? Um, brew list um, new shell. Cause I, Yes, so I think I do have new shell. Um, and I think I tried it and walked away. And I don't really remember why. Um, I'd have to go look it up um, and see. Maybe I just didn't give enough time. I don't know. But I did play with it for a hot second, but I didn't. it didn't stick. So, um, okay. So the problem is, is the to-do database returns... Um, So target status is a Boolean and X status is a Boolean. Um, what's the issue? Oh, here's the problem that we're parsing. Yeah, this is the issue. We parse status param to a Boolean and that just doesn't work because this is either complete or incomplete. And I think both of those parts to um, false here. So this parsing's wrong. Um, so um, status param. Oh, yeah, there we go. No, nah, it was right the first time. Yeah, status uh, param is either complete or incomplete. Uh, we should map complete to true and incomplete to false. Now, can it do that? Um, aha, that's better. That's cool. Okay, so if the status is incomplete, we'll get a true. Anything else will be a false. Eh, that's maybe not perfect, but um, it could work as a thing. Um, uh, 
Oh wow! So I'm I'm just looking at this thing that you pasted in. Um, yikes! And is, is New Shell the one that sort of lets you do things like a CSV or JSON? You can you sort of can treat data like from an LS command and things like that in a more structured way. Is that the one that did that? Because that was a really neat idea. I just didn't feel like I was going to use it. Um, and so I think that's why I kind of wandered off. It's like, if you were going to use that, that would be really awesome. But if you aren't going to use that, it um, uh, seemed like that was not going to be super useful. Um, and yeah, right. I remember seeing things like this. And so I feel like actually for like sysadmin work, this would be just rocking awesome. Um, I'm just not, I'm I, not, I'm not currently doing that kind of stuff where I would think that I would need that. Um, and so I have not gone down that road um, in any serious way, but I can appreciate that it would be potentially helpful. Uh, or uh, super valuable, actually. Potentially helpful is too weak. Um, so now, yay, we pass. And our coverage is presumably getting better. Yes, all of that's green now. In fact, this is now like 100%. So to do databases, 100%. To do controller, all we have missing is this error where we should fail in some useful way if there's no to do with the given ID. And there is a model test for that over here in user controller spec. Yes, responds appropriately to request for non-existent ID. So we ought to be able to actually make that um, implement a test uh, for to do's based on this test for users. Let's just be super uninteresting about our prompt and see if it will do the right thing. Um, and that's looking pretty promising, actually. Um, so then that was getting a to do by ID. This would be, we failed to get the to-do. Um, oh, I put it in the wrong place. Erps, erps, erps. Don't go there. Whoa, what happened? Oh, I tried copy, cutting right out of the world there. That is not good. Um, so I need the spec. Where's the stack file? Oh, no, I want to be up here. There's the spec file. Um, so I want that to be here and uh, so we asked for an, an ID with the value null and we assert that we get a not found response um, out of that. And that seems reasonable. Now, did I break the database? What did I do here? Oh, what? What? Those shouldn't be there anyway. Oh, that's why, because they're not in the test code. They should have never been there. Um, so we added some imports that we didn't want. Uh, uh, uh. And we pass, and what do we get here? Hey, 100% test coverage. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so that was, um, uh, yeah, and I, I'm looking at your comments, Justice. I, I, I guess I just don't find myself making a lot of complicated data pipelines. Now, that said, when I'm doing research, I often do. So there can be times where there's a, a complex pipeline of 
grepping and awking or some, you know, modern equivalents thereof said, you know, sort of munging the data into the form that I need it, usually a CSV table, so I can drop it into R and do statistics on it. And so there, sometimes we do end up with interesting pipelines. And I could imagine new shell might be actually really nice for that. Um, but uh, I don't find I make a lot of data pipelines outside of that. Um, hasn't been a thing. Um, but then I don't really do data science. Um, but 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 again, I could, I could see that for uh, sysadmin work, when I'm doing that kind of stuff in the lab, um, there can be complicated pipelines. And this sort of structured data could be super useful for that kind of setup. So I could imagine that being a thing. Um, it just hasn't sort of come to the top of the um, list of things for me to care about. Um, whereas Fish does some, like the autocomplete in Fish is just really nice. And that's been the thing that I have found really useful and why I've kept using it um, is I've liked that. So, um, yeah, that's the thing. So I think what is, it's uh, three thirty-seven. I think we have more or less. Um, I mean, we don't have the, a lot of this isn't commented. And there are some issues with this code, but we have more or less built um, a working version of the lab. Oh, oh no, we have not actually, because. The lab write-up, if we go to, do I have lab tests open anywhere? You don't look like I do. Let's open it over here. So we do still have some work to do. Um, and that is clearly going to take up the entire two hours because um, I didn't want a whole nother on the side. I just wanted it in there because um, uh, this is taken a whole nother two hours or a whole two hours so much for half an hour my wife always says like if i give her an estimate she just mentally doubles it um and sometimes multiples of four would be better um okay i don't know zoxide um copy what does oxide do uh, a terminal, oh, I feel like maybe I've looked at this. Yeah, I feel like I looked at this and I really liked the idea and then didn't get there. Maybe because Fish did it pretty well and I didn't feel like I needed it but I don't remember to be honest with you um, so uh, I'll think about that um, yeah so I could preview this little guy here would preview the the um, VS code for me um, I don't really well I guess that probably easier for you guys let's do that okay wah, wah, wah. Uh, so where's the list of things we want it to be able to do? Okay, so we should be able to list all the to-dos. We've done that. List a single to-do by ID. We've done that. Okay, we have not implemented limiting the number of to-dos. So we should do that. Um, uh, actually, let's try to do this in a... TDD kind of way. That would be interesting. Um, so status by category. Um, uh, confirm. I don't, oh, oh yes. We should do that actually because I think that filtering by body containing something is a deal. So let's do that. And let's, th we'll probably throw an IO exception because we're going to need to do that. Now, can you test? Aha. Can get to do's by body, blah, blah, blah. We set the body to be tempor. Um, that, come here. Oh, stop it. 
Um, back down to the bottom. Um, we get the value and we say, does the body contain that? Great. That actually looks like a pretty good test. Um, I like that. Does that test pass? Boom, ba -dum, boom, ba -dum, boom. No. That test does not pass. 190. Oh, because we, yeah, duh, because we don't actually have that check here. Um, uh, filter body, if defined. I wonder if that's going to be enough. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, because it doesn't need to know very much at that point. Um, boom. And that probably will get us there because it's doing a pretty good job on that stuff. Hey, we have tests. Um, uh, you should add check boxes in. Ah, uh, yeah, we could. Um, I thought about it actually is to make those check boxes. Um, could be a thing. Um, actually, no. And, you know, here we do have check boxes, so we're not very consistent. Um, so it's not a bad idea um, to make those check boxes, actually. Hmm. Maybe I'll make it an issue quick on that. Uh, I need this. Is the starter? Yes. Uh, issues. Um, Use checkboxes in the lab task.md file um, where we list the things the students should do. It would make sense to use checkboxes instead of just bullet lists. Boom. Oh, and actually, it's probably worth saying, edit, this is probably true for subsequent labs as well. Boom. So, um, and then C-Film said that you're doing some, you're adding some website projects to your portfolio. That's cool. Um, I hope that that's working out well for you. Um, and then Justin asking whether it should return a bad request if there's an unknown get param. So that would be, Uh, yeah, we don't actually check that. Yeah, so if, if there are random things in the query params, we just ignore it. That's an interesting question. Um, should we return a um, bad request error if there are... Um, keys in, uh, you know, unrecognized query parameters. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think about that. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, probably, actually. Probably. Um, another issue. Um, uh, have the server return a bad request error if there are unknown query params. We should probably return some kind of error if there are unknown query params instead of just quietly ignoring them as we do now. That is probably true. Um, wow, what coding language do I think is probably most like Rust? 
Um, uh, wow. I don't know. I mean, Russ takes good ideas from so many different places. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I have a great answer to that question. Um, o Camel, maybe, yeah, I guess. That's a that's an answer. Um, probably a good answer. Um, and certainly it was based on that in a lot of ways. And the original Rust compiler was written in OCaml, if I remember correctly. Um, but, uh, hmm. Uh, yes, Scratch. Absolutely is it, too. That, that's an excellent answer. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I think Rust is, is unusual enough in, a, in enough ways that it doesn't have... I don't, it's not like a lot of languages where, you know, I feel they're, they're semi-interchangeable. I, like, I always thought Python and, Ru and Ruby were yeah, kind of, they did similar things. I was happy using either one. Um, Ruby was hot when Rails was a thing. Python's taken over the world because of, you know, good AI library support. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I've, from when I was using them, I mostly didn't care. Um, but Rust is really, excuse me, Rust is really just different. Um, and I like that. I mean, I think that's one of the things that's cool, that's cool about it. Okay, so we just did body. Um, uh, thank you. Um, so now we need to... Hear me. Mm. Uh, my apologies. That must be auditorially distressing, especially if you're wearing headphones. I apologize. Um, I should be like trying to rush to mute the mic. Um, uh, okay, so we want to limit. What time is it? Ooh, it's 10 till. Not going to get all of this done in two hours. But um, so we get that. So we want to limit. What does it think I want to do now? And I don't really want to do that because uh, we've already tested that. We just did it with Blanche. Um, confirm that we can limit the number of to-dos we get uh, using the limit query parameter. Boom, bop. Beep, boop. Yep. Now, is that going to be a thing? I'm going to pass in 10. And we assert that we have 10 of them. That's actually pretty reasonable. Okay. Um, and that will then fail because there's no support for it. Um, uh, in to do database, so we're gonna have to add that. Now, this is interesting because where you put it really matters. You want to limit after you've done all the filtering, and so I wonder if it's going to be smart enough to figure that out. So, if I select all this and when you come over here and I say add filtering to the selected. Um, list to do's implementation that uh, limits the number of returned to do's to the value specified uh, by the limit query parameter. I wonder if it's going to do the right thing. Have I used Kotlin? Not enough, actually. I mean, I do, you asked about Java earlier. I think, I think the cool kids definitely feel that 
Kotlin's probably better than Java in a lot of ways. And I liked Groovy. I played with that some now quite a few years ago. And I liked Groovy a lot. Um, uh, and I suspect that I would like Kotlin. I just don't program in Java much anymore. I used to program in Java a lot. And um, kind of Rust took over the world here. And uh, I haven't actually used Kotlin very much. So I would, you know, if I needed to use a Java-like language. So, like, we probably ought to be converting um, the these labs to be using Kotlin instead of Java. In a perfect world, that would probably be a thing. Um, but, yeah. Or we'll just convert them all to use Rust and leave Java and Kotlin behind. But um, I think that um, uh, Kotlin would be better than Java here. I just, we haven't gotten around to it. Um, okay, so list to do's, did it keep all the stuff? It does. So status, category, owner, limit. It puts limit, of status, category, owner. I'm gonna comment this out. Oops, I'll just comment the old one out and see if how that's doing. Um, limit, it gets the query param, parses to be an integer, doesn't check if it's a sensible number. Um, I guess we do here, oh, interesting, copy of range. Um, oh, and then we take the minimum, so we start at zero, we take the minimum of limit and the length, that's reasonable. Um, oh, so this makes a new array that's a subset of the original array. Interesting, that's kind of cool. And it did put it at the end, which is where it kind of needs to be. Um, so I think that's probably going to work. Um, and it passes. zippity doo -da. <laughs> Um So I'll delete that guy. Um, yeah, so now if I had check marks, I could be check marking, but I don't have check marks. Um, so we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, um, we've done that. Um, uh, I, um, probably would be good to have a test that checks for, uh, that incomplete does the right thing. Uh, 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 um, so if I say complete, um, I wonder if it'll figure something out here. Aha, it did. That's pretty cool. Boom. Incomplete. And then it should be false. Nice. Uh, so I think it actually figured that one out pretty much entirely on its own. Cool. Um, oh, you got a pull request. Dude, you are a monster. And I mean that in the best possible way. Is what was 318? Is that what I just made? Oh, come on. Come on. Give me the little thingy. Oh, come on. Hover over. Fine. Oh, there. Ah, <laughs> so you just made that change for me. Okay. That's cool. I will. Uh, check that and approve it uh, here after the stream's over. Um, so we got that. I think that takes care of both of those. We've done that. Um, we do filter by owner, right? Uh, yeah, we filter by owner. Uh, we filter by category. That's down here. Um, now we don't have a test for multiple um, checks. And so that's the kind of thing we probably need to do. Um, 
So we need a test that confirms that we handle multiple, uh, confirm that we handle um, multiple query parameters correctly. Um, for example, um, yeah, that thing. Um, although actually, let's do this whole thing. Um, do do do. Oops. Why why does it keep doing that to me? That is just weird. Um, should give us the first twelve step to do's with status complete and owner Blanche. Uh, ordered by category. Oh, I don't think we have any ordering by. Have I somehow? I don't think I've done that. Um, I must have missed that in the thing. But I think this isn't. This will probably then fail for that reason. You gonna be able to fill something in for me? Yes. Um. So we set the owner to Blanche, the status to complete, the limit to twelve, order by category. We do the thing, we get the to-dos we got back, we loop through them, we confirm that Blanche is the owner, the status is true. Uh, we should confirm the category. Why do we not confirm? Oh, no, that's in the ordering. Um, so then this is confirming that they're ordered. So we loop, oh, wow. So it actually looks like it may have done this correctly. So we check that the ith category is less than or equal to the i plus first category. Well done. Um, oh, it probably needs to, yeah. Import that. Do we check anywhere that there's just 12 of them? We do not. And we should do that. Um, Assert uh, true uh, that. Oh, here, if I told it, mm, this sec, let's. Ah, eh, 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 doesn't know what I'm trying to check. Um, confirm that exactly 12 to do's were returned. But there we go. Now, does that test pass? I bet the order by doesn't pass because I don't think we imp ever implemented that. Correct. It does not pass. Line 265 fails. And it's in the ordering check, actually. So if we move this first, um, I think we should find that everything but the ordering check passes. Uh, yes, that appears to be true. We should have a separate test that confirms that the ordering, um, that we can sort, oh, it's, it's trying to do that. If we, that we can, yes, boom. Ah, stop that thing. Why do you do that to me? There you go. Um, stop it. And uh, we actually should have the throws here uh, as well. Okay, so can we make this? Will it make this test for me? Boom. We say order by owner, we get the stuff, and then we check that the owner order is correct. So that looks great. So we should fail two tests now. Wah, 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 wah. Yep, we do. Now we got to implement that in database. Um, so order results if um, 
order by parameter is defined. Um, Query params contains order by, get the order by, and call something called order by that does the work. Okay, I'll buy that. Now we have to implement that though. Um, are you gonna give it to me? Yes. Oh, interesting, yes. So we have this if, could have done a, a, a switch thing, perhaps, but um, this is what would have been nice as a match. Um, so, um, so uh, plucky two B two point zero. Um, we are using Angular seventeen, and uh, I actually tried to introduce signals into uh, the lab um, in the stream actually two weeks ago. And because I really, I think signals look awesome and I tried using it and it didn't work um, for me. I couldn't make, I couldn't get some things to connect, which is not to say signals are bad or that, um, we shouldn't use them. It's just that in the limited time I had available, I didn't get it to work. Um, but I do, they look like really clearly the right thing to do. And um, that was, you know, I, I was I was sad and a little frustrated that I didn't make that happen. And so it's definitely on my list of things that I would really like to make happen. Um, if I'd had more time over winter break, uh, um, and, um, oh, hello, Michael. Pleased to see you again. Um, yes, from plucky 2 b 2.0, I did not figure out that you were Michael. So, and for people, Michael is an alum who graduated. How long ago did you graduate, Michael? That would be, I almost said 10 years. Oh, it's only 2020. Okay, not so bad. Um, actually, only three years. Wow, I clearly got that wrong. Um, yeah, and I think signals just would be a huge improvement. So I might actually take you up on that. Um, uh, so um, I don't know if you're on the Discord um, for this, but if you got on the Discord and said hello, uh, I would like to chat with you uh, about that. That would be actually pretty cool. Um, oh, and thank you, Justice. You're so good. Um and uh, so Vincent asked if I could use Copilot to refactor. Well, Java doesn't support matches, so I can't really do match. Like a, a um, uh, so thank you, um, Michael. I don't know. There, I could probably refactor it to a switch, but is this even does this even make sense as a switch? Probably not because we have to use the equals. So this might be as good as it gets. Um, uh, for Java, but whatever. Um, so if the order by is owner, then we call sorted using the compare to with the owner, or the category, the body, or the status. Ah, there's a reasonable chance that'll actually do the right thing. Um, oop, why well, not save? Oh, that's because I was in the wrong place. Uh, 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 bah, bah, bah. Oh, come on. Give me my file. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it didn't work. Uh, what didn't work? That's a good question. Uh, okay, so we'll have to actually look at the test output file. That's test results. There we go. Oh, it says everything passed. Oh, it did. It did. I scrolled up too far. So that order by actually works. Woohoo! Um, I bet our test coverage now got worse because we probably don't have any coverage for order by. So we should, really? But we added tests that have order by, we, we drove that. Oh, we have tests that sort by um, owner and category, but we don't have tests that sort by bat, body or status. So we would actually need tests to sort by body and status to get our test coverage back up. Uh, okay, 
that's not that big a deal. We can do, so we sort by owner, but it seemed to think we had done sorting by category. Oh, it, the category was in the multiple parameters thing. Yes. Um, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know that it knows what the coverage is, um, but let's, um, can you get the test coverage up to 100%? So I'll start with a really unhelpful query um, and see if it can kind of figure out what's happening um, there. Yeah, it is probably, you know, what a student might ask um, at first. Um, okay, that's a bunch of generic, but unhelpful, um, not incorrect stuff. Uh, yeah, so it didn't, it wasn't able to figure out what we were missing. Um, but I bet I could do... Um, uh, uh, by adding tests for um, sorting by status and what's missing? Status and body. Um, by body and status. Boom. So yeah, it wasn't able to in look at the report. Um, uh, and do we get some? Yeah, so I think these will be fine. Um, things are similar enough that I'm, I'm willing to bet these are going to just be no problem. So we'll grab that and we'll stick that here. Boom. So let's have a look. Um, can confirm that we can sort um, by body. Um, so we'll set the body as the order by, and then we'll compare the bodies. That was great. Um, using status, we'll set this to status, and we'll, oh, and it actually was smart and did Boolean compare. Um, because you can't just do less than a Boolean, so that actually probably is reasonable. Test pass, fingers crossed. Test pass, and now we'll look at our test coverage. Oh, ah, so this is actually, um, if we, pro oh, yes, if we provided a, a sort by, with an illegal um, status, then it's going to biff. Um, and this actually would be a place to potentially pass in a, or return a bad request. Um, and then we could have a test for it that might be reasonable. Um, let's actually do that. Um, so this is in... Um, to do database. Burr, burr, burr. So here, if we um, we want to throw a bad request, we want to we throw or oh, what do I do? Yeah, ah. So I think we ah. Um, Generate a bad request error if, there we go, you gonna figure it out. Oh, no, I wanted, I wanted to take that, not throw it away, bingo. Um, and I, I think I've got too many things here. That's gonna be a problem. Yeah, so. The order by parameter must be one of blah, blah, blah. Now, does that, what is it? How does that? Um, I don't think, 
that generates uh, a bad request. So actually, I think we need to hear, no, get to do's. Here, we would have to try catch this um, and turn it into a appropriate response. So I think we're gonna have to say try, um, what are you trying to do here? You were trying to do something and I got in your way. Um, hmm, that's a thing because we do have these IO exceptions and we don't deal with them explicitly. So that's actually not a terrible thing to do. Um, and so this would be, well, I still like having this actually. And so then this would be to do's. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, another thing I like about uh, Rust over Java is Rust's assumption that things are immutable until you say different. Um, I think that is absolutely the right thing to do. Um, oh, that doesn't actually happen. Oh, I thought it did. Well, okay. But we had an illegal argument exception. Illegal argument exception. And if we get that, we want to... Um, throw new, uh, is there a bad request, uh, bad request response? Yes. Um, uh, uh, illegal query parameter. Sure. Um, I don't want either of these because that'll take care of that. Um, and do we actually put a reasonable message in here? Um, uh, we should say what it was. Um, order by plus must be. Yeah, that'll be better because it will tell people what they sent in that was wrong. Um, so that should all pass. And then we should write a test for that because we still have, this will still be um, untested. La, 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 spec. Uh, so that's, we sort by all the things. So, Confirm that if the um, order by query param has an invalid value, we get a bad request response. Bad request 400? Um, oh, I, you people have been talking and I've been ignoring you. That's bad. Um, um, Cool. That's awesome. Thank you, Plucky or Michael. Um, uh, and the immutable stuff, I think, definitely is a win. Um, so I don't remember. Is bad request 400? I don't think it is. Uh, HV response codes. Um, uh, oh, it is. 400 is bad request. Well, look at you. GitHub Copilot, knowing more than me. Um, uh, let's um, uh, boop. Back you up. Now, test and boom. Bad order by gives bad request. So we make the query params. We set the order by to be foo. I don't really like foo. Um, invalid 
value. Um, then we assert that we throw a bad response. Seems reasonable. We have to import some things, I assume. Uh, uh, we've got an assert throws in here somewhere. Assert throws, right? Don't we? Assertions dot assert throws. What is the issue? Oh, I think this may just be need to be imported. There we go. Yeah, so it was just an import problem. So we assert that it throws that when we call get to do's and then uh, so we picked that, and that's probably not right. What did we actually throw? Um, oh, no, no, because I think um, well, no, I think that I'm pretty sure that won't pass. I think those have to match up better than they do right now. So line 317, yes, this assertion fails. Um, so we have to kind of get these things to line up. I kind of like this language. Um, um, I almost... Uh, uh, Yeah, I thought about logging, right? That's actually, there's a there's a, an issue floating around about switching to logging or adding logging to a lot of this stuff. Like the server side clearly should be logging when these things happen. Um, and um, but for the moment, but I do kind of want to print or return Maybe it's just enough to say colon and then this um, ooh, now I got colon colon and a semicolon. That's just terrible. Um, was this must be hmm. um Ah, order by equal. Yes, thank you. I like that idea. Um, order by blah must be one of those. Okay, let's try that. And that means we're going to have to grab this. And really, I don't want, I don't need all of this um, to match in some, a lot of ways. But... Um, let's leave it there for now. Um, order by, and now we don't need this part. Uh, invalid value, because that's probably really fragile. If somebody changes the error message, the test fails, and that's probably not good. But let's get it to work. Oh, no, that didn't work. Um... 317 again. I uh, probably didn't get it right. Um, absolutely so many great ideas from your side. Um, so what is it? Uh, why don't we be brutal and print um, exception.get message? So that we can see what it actually is. Oops, ah, missing a thing there. Uh, oh no, Gradle's eating that. Um, it'll be in the 
report though, I think. Uh, test results. Or not. Oh, but it does show us both sides. So we had ELU query parameter order by invalid value must be ELU query parameter. Oh, we got two illegal query parameters. Oh, so I don't want to put this thing there. It's being added by, by, by who? Um, did I just, did I just screw up? No. Uh, so this must add that, I guess. This must get added by illegal argument. Uh, no, by who? Who? Where is that coming from? Um, uh, so we expected this, and we got the one with the two extras. So that means that uh, this is what we expected. Exception.get message has got too many of them. So I think we don't want to add it here. Um, and is it just, yeah, we just don't want the illegal query parameter. That seems to be bad news. Hey, and the test pass. Um, oh, it's in the other method where you catch the illegal error. So maybe we did want it here. Um, put it back. And that would be in to do controller. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We added it here. So we had it twice. So really, we just want that. Good catch. That's going to be the better solution. Yes. And so our tests pass. And our coverage now is probably 100%. Because that's awesome. Hey, 100%. We win. Uh, so, uh, green bars for the win. And it's nearly half an hour long. I need to stop because I do have other things I have to do this weekend. Um, uh, yeah, lots of things I need to do this weekend. But this was actually very helpful. Certainly not the half hour, um, exercise I expected the two and a half hour exercise. I am so bad at estimating how long things will take. Um, and so, so to, to summarize, with experience, like I wrote the lab, I know the code quite well. I've used these tools a lot. With experience, I was able to do the whole lab. Well, I was able to get GitHub Copilot to do most of the lab for me in two and a half hours. Is that, um, is that a win for the students? I don't know. I think that's gonna be a really interesting um, uh, conversation to have in class. Um, of course, I can't really ask them, require them to watch a two and a half, two and a half hour video of me doing this. This took a lot longer than I expected. Um, but I'll encourage them to watch it because they've got nothing else to do. Um, and we'll see what happens in the conversation. So Vincent asked, how would you grade it? Well, among other things, the commenting's kind of haphazard. Um, and uh, the naming might be a little whack in places. But, you know, I mean... I think I would give it a pretty good grade. Um, uh, and we'll see. Um, uh, and yeah, so you did talk. Um, and I could try to edit all that out or they could just fast forward over it. Um, 
So I think we'll just like send them, you know, I'll, I'll, they, and they know the stream exists, but I'll mention it again. Um, I actually mentioned it to them before classes started because I knew I was going to use the stream to work on some stuff. Um, and I have no idea. That's a great question. Is it Sue? No idea. If any, zero, half, no idea. Not a clue. Um, uh, none of them have mentioned it. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's, it. Vincent, that's a good idea is, um, maybe try to come up with some time codes that point into the, um, uh, the most relevant parts. Um, uh, um, yeah, uh, I don't know how to do time code. Oh, I create highlights. I know it's possible. I think I did it once for fun. Um, uh, but I haven't actually, I think that was a long time ago and I don't really remember, but I can look it up. I, I don't think it's hard. Um, I would, I'll probably post this on, um, YouTube as well. Um, uh, in a, probably as a, um, unlisted, um, uh, and that's what I'll share with the students. Um, but I'll, and I could find some time codes, um, there that might be useful. And, you know, there was a large digression here because there were a lot of interesting questions. Um, yeah, like all the other streams that would be uploaded. However, I'll just do this one, but it probably not. Well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll put it in, um, the unhindered by code set as well. It's just as a public thing. Maybe that's the thing to do. Um, and not do it separately in my thing. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Um, um, well, don't get too excited. Um, I, I'm probably not going to immediately get, roll back and catch up on all the old ones, but I'll try to get this one up. I'll try to do that today. Um, and we'll get that um, on YouTube and I'll try to put some time codes on it. And maybe it'll make some sense to some people. But in the meantime, I'm going to quit now because I need to go and... Um, yeah, I think the initial prompt, like some of the beginning stuff is probably good. And then, and maybe some of the stuff at the end where I'm like filling in the tests, um, the missing functionality in the tests, I think that that probably is worth looking at. Um, uh, uh, yes, and the do all my coverage, well, that didn't work. Um, that, that section could be a good thing. Um, so there is, I think, definitely stuff worth watching here. Um, just going through and figuring out what it is. Um, so thank you all. You have been awesome, as always. Um, this has been super helpful. Um, it was fun doing the lab with GitHub Copilot, doing the work for me. Um, and it'll be interesting. The conversation will be interesting in class, and I will definitely report back on that. So um, tomorrow stream, so tomorrow, I should probably say something about tomorrow. Um, yes, exactly. That's part of why the, the uploading hasn't happened is to do it properly, you really have to like, you know, you'd want to think about it and have a good description. And that's actually then doubles the amount of work and I don't have it. Um, but yeah, exactly, right? I mean, I think that is how it works. And um, uh, so that's why things haven't been posted to YouTube is I just, it's too much work. So tomorrow, um, Sunday, 10 to noon, uh, CST, um, uh, what are we going to do? Um, I've got a million things I ought to do, but actually I would kind of like to get back to the EC and rust, um, uh, I think that there are some, I think there's three pull requests from his, from justice that I would like to deal with. Um, and I haven't written any rust code in weeks and that would be nice to do again. Um, and so I think that would be awesome. Let's do that. And then next Saturday, uh, that's going to be the, I don't know what, what is next Saturday? Uh, two rustlings again from from scratch. That would be definitely a win. Um, uh, so 
Next Saturday is the third. Um, three Feb, um, two to four p.m. CST. Um, I think. Um, oh, I can imagine that there are wrestling speed runs. I could totally imagine that. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that, but I think that's a thing. I can believe that's a thing. So I don't know. Saturday, I kind of feel like doing Advent of Code, um, 2023 in Rust. Um, uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of programming and programming adjacent stuff at the moment and doing something that's just kind of fun and not related to work, um, might be kind of nice. So I think I'm going to try that. Um, I might end up just doing more EC and Rust, but I think tentatively um, I'm going to go with uh, Advent of Code 2023 and Rust. We'll start that. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to like try to plan anything fancy or set some goal of keeping it all under a certain runtime or any of that stuff. Um, I think I'm just going to be like, let's look at the problem and see what the problem is and try to do the problem. Because um, I just kind of feel like like chilling and doing a little like light programming. Um, and I think that'll be fun. So that's the plan. Tentatively, I can be talked out of it. Um, so we'll do EC stuff tomorrow, try to get those pull requests out of the way. And then we'll uh, see about um, starting Advent of Code next week. So you are all awesome human beings. Thank you. Yeah, recreational development, right? Which, you know, says something about what a nerd that I am, that I actually like programming and want to just do a little, little light problem solving for fun. Um, but that's how I've been since I was a youngin. So, um, and that hasn't changed. You are awesome people. Thank you all for the help. I'm going to take off now. And I figure, yeah, I don't think anybody who's, who's suffered through this, um, you know, gets it right. So thank you all. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Um, stop.